goodness to you, not knowing if it's morning, afternoon, or evening, but it's always good to have good in front of your name <laughs> of a word, right? Well, I'm Good Sporty King, and welcome to Gift Friday. You know, I created it because so often we hear people say, T-G-I-F, thank God it's Friday. But I say, what allure does Friday have to that person who took their last breath on Thursday? or any day before that for all that matters. Therefore, I've learned to use what I learned from uh, what is proclaimed in Psalm 92 and two. And that is, it is good to proclaim your unfailing love in the morning, your faithfulness in the evening. Thus, what I use instead of TGIF, I use TGIT. Thank God it's today. And then TGIT, Thank God it's tonight. And you see, I've learned those from reading Matthew 6, 34. So don't worry about tomorrow, T-G-I-T, for tomorrow will bring its own worries, T-G-I-T. Today is enough. Today's trouble is enough for today. Thank God for today. Thank God for tonight. Because the, the gift to be able to wake up, go through a whole day, and then do it all again tomorrow that's a gift. And that's something we should be thanking God for all day. So it gives us another alternative to how we look at TGIF. And that is trusting God is free. Trusting God is free. Think about it. What does it cost you to enjoy the greatest gift of every day that you have? You have nothing. You have nothing. Yeah, it costs you nothing. <laughs> the gift of waking up costs you nothing. So you should trust God Thank, trust God and know that it costs you nothing. That is free. Sometimes you got to look at your notes when you prepare these wonderful messages, okay? But that still moves us to realizing that when we go back to TGIF and we take the T that is in the front and move it to the back, what we get is G-I-F-T and what we should be thanking God for all the time. And that is the gift that he is for, G-I-F-T. God is for today. That's the gift, and that's why we've got that TGIF going for us as well. TGIF, God, G-I-F-T, God is for today. And that's what Gift Friday is all about. It's about my online sharing of one of my original poems to use to inspire you, an audience, or in a job, wherever, whatever you want to do. It's about being inspired. It's with one of my original poems. I'll read it here online, and then I'll drop it. After I'm finished reading it, I'll drop it in the thread so that you can download and have your keepsake colorful copy of it to pick you up whenever you need it, okay? So then... Uh, um, uh, and then I'll post it to my site as well so that it'll be there in my blog. So what I want you to do is, uh, again, you'll be able to click on the link, but what I've chosen today is a poem that speaks to the plight. As, you know, as we continue to go through this pandemic and many people have learned new things about themselves and their beliefs. So I've chosen a poem that speaks to the plight of staying connected to your beliefs. That's not the poem, but it's about staying connected to your beliefs. And this week, this week's poem, it was actually written in January 2009. It's unpublished. I didn't put it in a book. And it highlights one of my primary beliefs in celebrating. So this poem is called Shine in 009. Shine in 009, S-H-I-N-E. Sincerely help, inspire, and nurture excellence. Okay, it's just an acronym, but does it make sense? You see, what we see and what we say carry over into others' lives and impacts their day. So we must measure our words, recognize the spirits they touch, Know our words have a lingering effect. They can be too few or even too much. Understand words, W-O-R-D-S, what others remember and digest strengthens spirits. So often our actions are based on what we hear. If you prophesize failure and hopelessness, how can you end up with anything but despair? 
For words go into the spirit, then we share them with the next in line. If you speak of joy and the blessing of the next step, you'll find that your walk is fine. When you speak, speak of excellence, for perfection cannot be reached. Make it your goal to preach what you practice beyond practicing what you preach. So as you find ways to help people, start out by helping yourself. Exercise your mind, your body, and please exercise your spiritual health. For each of us must now, for each of us must keep growing. Keep finding new ways to enjoy your stay. God has brought us beyond the new year. Shine, shine, sincerely help inspire and nurture excellence and celebrate a happy new day. So not only did I write that in January of 2009, obviously January is the winter and it's the start of the new year. So that's why I wrote it. But what I'm going to do is break down some of the um, stanzas and show you in between what we're talking about in terms of that poem. So think about it. <clears throat> Sincere, so I'll kind of halfway reread the poem, okay? And I'll add these things in between. Shine. Okay, it's just an acronym, but does it make sense? You see, what we see and what we say carry over into others' lives and impacts their day. Have you ever said, you look so stupid in that outfit? You'll never amount to anything. So we must measure our words, recognize the spirits they touch, know our words have a lingering effect. They can be too few or even too much. Understand that words, W-O-R-D-S, what others remembers, strengthen spirits. But when you have those types of words, I don't have it in the poem, but when you have, you look so stupid in that outfit, you'll never amount to much, amount to much W-O-R-D-S becomes what others remember, destroy spirits. When in fact, what we want to do is recognize that what others remember and digest strengthen spirits. So therefore, we want the words that say, I knew he'd end up just like his father. Oops, those are the negative ones. I knew he'd end up just like his father and that she'd follow that same patch because of the friend she hung out with. Those are the words that are destroying spirits. What we want our words to do is strengthen spirits. I'm so proud of you. You're such a good, good role model, always so giving and sharing with others. For words go into the spirit, then we share them with the next in line. If you speak of joy and the blessing of the next step, you'll find that your walk is just fine. When you speak, speak of excellence, for perfection cannot be reached. Make it your goal to preach what you practice beyond practicing what you preach. In 2018, after winning second place in the Toastmasters District um, International Speech Context final, I had several members come up to me and express their sadness that I didn't win first place. And as they did, in my mind, I was already working on my speech title for my next speech was, you still have to win second place. You still have to win second place. Ask yourself, are you encouraging people to be their best than pitying them because someone else at their best was better? See, don't practice what you preach. Preach what you practice. So as you find new ways to help people, start out by helping yourself. Exercise your mind, your body, and please exercise your spiritual health. The refrain we often hear when someone says God is good, we don't hear God is good most of the time. It's we hear God is good all of the time. <laughs> and you have, you've heard me say it before. I call it taking care of your PMS, your physical, mental, and spiritual self. And the three actually work together because each requires a certain amount of belief in the other to push through the pain. <clears throat> the pain. So I'm asking, are you still struck complaining about the struggle of the pandemic? Or are you celebrating the little things that you've overcome to survive the, the pandemic? You see, I like what I read in, a, in, a, um, in an edsurge.com post in 2019 by a woman named Joe Bowler. 
She said, without a little struggle, she said, struggling is essential to happiness because of the lessons learned and how certain aspects of it serves its purpose. Without a little struggle throughout life, we would have never known better choices and we would never have found true happiness. Then there are 10 tips that I learned from about dealing with struggle from a, a, a page called The Environmentor, which is on blog10.com. And here are the 10 tips to uh, deal with struggle. One, feel your feelings. Realize it's okay to feel pain, that pain of struggle. Let yourself be sad, angry, or any emotion because no emotion is wrong. Make a plan. And then you and I'm gonna have you you'll see you see the uh, tentree.com is the site to go if you want to get the full printout of what they mean by each of the 10 things. But make a plan. Know that other people do struggle. Reach out. We have to, we hear people talk about it a lot now. Ask for help. There's no pit, there's no um there's uh it, it's the power is in being able to ask for help. No shame in asking for help. That's on the list, by the way. And then accept help, accept people's support. Help other people, and that will also help you get helped. Enjoy yourself. That's how you get through a struggle. That's what we're talking about. No shame in, 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 in the fact that we struggle. All of us are going through something. Remember, I may not have walked in your shoes, but I've sat in your row. And then be proud that you are here to, end, to deal with the struggle, right? TGIT, thank God it's today. And lastly, celebrate. And they don't have to be in that order, by the way, but you have to celebrate, celebrate being you because you make a difference. You've heard my acronym, JOY, J-O-Y, just one you. Always worth celebrating. You're going to make it through the storm. And I know I spent a little longer on that last stanza because, excuse me, it sets up the close in the final stanza and a belief that I believe that I preach because I practice it. And my final stanza was actually, for each of us must keep growing, keep finding new ways to enjoy your stay. God has brought us through a new year, beyond a new year, shine and celebrate a happy new day. That's the last stanza in the poem. But what I want you to do is remember that we're not living in the new normal. This is the now normal. This is now a time for sensitivity to our direction. All of us are going through something and we've been through some things and we've never made it through alone, even when we thought we were alone or that we did make it. One of my daily prayers is that I can be less judgmental because I know I'll never make it to be non-judgmental. And so take that extra breath. Remember how you shined in 2009, and then remember to listen and learn about what it's like to be one in 2021. Gift Friday. I'll get that dropped into the thread as soon as I get off this broadcast, but thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing, whether you're listening live or listening to the video. I'm Sporty King. Have a safe July 4th weekend. God bless you and ciao.